Yeah, Paul, this is uh, a really interesting landscape here and very different from the ones that uh, we've been looking at. Uh, could you give us a bit of a description of uh, what we're seeing here? Sure. Well, this is actually an organic landform. It's a, a sphagnum bog. So this is an accumulation of organic material in a closed depression, one of uh, many dozens of such features at Eliza Lake. Uh, this is also related to the presence of very fine textured uh, parent materials underneath. So the glacial lacustrine sediments that underlie this deposit are very impervious. So in any kind of a depressional site, water will tend to accumulate and this will create the conditions which favor the uh, um, uh, accumulation of organic matter. Eventually when the water table is uh, sufficiently high, we will create conditions where sphagnum moss uh, can become established and over time we end up with an accumulation of peat which is largely uh, derived from the accumulation of the of the dead sphagnum moss. Mm -hmm. This is the living sphagnum moss that we're standing on and but below this living surface layer we have approximately a meter to a meter and a half at this point of uh, the accumulated uh, mostly sphagnum derived organic material. So let's use this peat auger to take a sample from farther down and see what the contact looks like at the base of the peat accumulation with the mineral soil. Okay, so we've extracted the peat core and now we'll flip the vein around so we can examine the material that we've pulled up. So we can see the base of the peat. So it, the peat accumulation starts at uh, probably a meter and a half from the surface. And this very dark bluey gray material here is the underlying fine glacial lacustrine sediment, so very high clay content. But what's quite distinctive here compared to the upland soils that we see at Eliza Lake is this very pronounced blue-gray color. So this is indicative of uh, permanently anaerobic conditions. So we have not only saturation, but also this overlying accumulation of organic matter, which means that there is no oxygen available in these sediments. And so instead of having the normal yellowish brown colors that we observe in the upland soils that are well oxidized, we have these very strongly reducing colors, which are this blue gray. So these kinds of organic accumulations have, have quite a bit of significance for uh, the, the carbon balance of these uh, forest landscapes. So obviously there's a big accumulation of carbon represented by the organic matter that's, that's stored in this, in this peat deposit. It represents only a very small percentage of the landscape here at the Elisa Lake Research Forest but it's got a disproportionate role as a reservoir of soil carbon. So in that sense, it's one of the ways in which carbon will be sequestered out of the atmosphere. But offsetting that is the fact that wetlands of this kind are also a source of greenhouse gases, um, including methane, which is a very powerful greenhouse gas, as well as carbon dioxide. And so we can actually see the emission of bubbles of, of gas from, the, from the, the peat accumulation just by poking at it below, the, below the, the water surface. So this is what we're looking at is the release of bubbles that represent some mixture of methane and carbon dioxide. 